This A-Team adventure is called Room, Bath and Spider. You can read along with me in your book. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. The A-Team van speeds along a traffic-free road through the Nevada desert. Time passes, but the scenery barely seems to change. VA drives and Hannibal Smith sits relaxed beside him, smoking a cigar. Murdoch leans impatiently forward from the rear passenger seat. Hey, Colonel, are we ever going to get there? What's the name of this place we're heading for, anyway? The Solitary Inn. I guess that's better than being in solitary. <laughs> Which is where the police department would like us all to be. <laughs> the Solitary Inn is a specialist hotel built way out in the desert, providing an oasis for those who can afford the time and the money to cut themselves off from everyday life in the real world. Isolation. No collars and no phone. Ideal for the tired business tycoon, but not the place to visit if you're looking for excitement. And yet... The A-Team have been called in. Hannibal checks the map. Shouldn't be much further now. Sure enough, they come to a sign directing them off the main highway along a dusty, unmetalled road which leads nowhere but to the Solitary Inn. They take the turn off and lethargy disappears as the A-Team get keyed up in anticipation of the action which is likely to be before them. They arrive at the hotel at last. Hannibal lights a fresh cigar goes ahead to meet the owner who is the man who has called in the A-Team. Murdoch and Face remain in the van, while B.A. walks into the lobby, a little behind Hannibal, on the lookout for trouble. Mm. The owner is relieved that the A-Team have made it out to his establishment. You are the only ones who can help me. The police just laugh at my suspicions, but if this trouble goes on, it is the end for this hotel and my livelihood. What exactly is the trouble? The owner takes Hannibal into his office. The trouble is spiders, or rather, no spiders. You lost me already. A few weeks ago, one of our guests was found unconscious in his bath. Uh, the medical opinion was that he had been bitten by a black widow spider, but no spider was ever found. The guest made a good recovery, but wouldn't stay here any longer. Understandable. Quite so. That is the trouble. Since then, other guests have been bitten, always at night, and always no trace of the spider. Now, Colonel Smith, as you will understand, this is a very select establishment. We have a very exclusive clientele. That, I believe. Word has gotten around. People won't come here anymore. And how can we get rid of spiders that no one has ever seen? Seems to me you need pest control, not the A-team. I've not finished. I've been getting letters asking me to sell this hotel. Maybe you should do that. Get out while you can. The price they offer is ridiculously low, and it gets lower with each letter. I see. So you think somebody is deliberately setting spiders onto your guests to make you sell out cheap? Outside the office door, a girl is listening. The watchful B.A. grabs her. <clears throat> she smiles weakly. It's not what you think. I'm not spying on you. Just listening at keyholes. I'm trying to find out what's going on here, too. I'm glad you're the A-team. I need help. Spill it, sister. I'm Jenny Wayman. I'm looking for my father. He's a doctor and a specialist in spider venom. He heard about the trouble here and came down to investigate, but he's disappeared. Yeah? Yes! There's strange things going on here. I found out something I think you ought to know. What's that? Someone walking along the corridor causes the girl to spin around sharply. I can't tell you now. I can't trust anyone. Come to my room tonight, about eight. Mm. The girl moves off swiftly just as the office door opens and Hannibal comes out. Interesting, B.A. 
Let's take the van and scout around the desert for a while. Take in the sights. See what there is to see. <clears throat> After miles of desert road and endless sand, Murdoch makes the first discovery. Pull in over there. They find some tire tracks which cross the road and disappear into the desert on either side. They decide to follow the tracks, first to see where the vehicles were going. The tracks stop at a patch of scrub behind which they find a light aircraft. Murdoch makes a quick inspection. Hmm. Had to make an emergency landing. Trouble with the tailplane. Can it be fixed? B.A. doesn't answer, but fetches the tool kit from the van and sets to work. Face has been searching through the scrub. Uh, found a case of automatic rifles back there. Looks like someone's been smuggling in arms. They had to make a forced landing here, and they fetched the cargo in the trucks which made those tracks. B.A. soon finishes repairing the plane. This bird will fly better than the designer ever knew. Hannibal grins. Take her up on a reconnaissance trip, Murdoch. Follow those wheel tracks back the other way and see where they came from and where they've taken the other cases of guns that were on this plane. Go with them, Face. Hmm? If you see any trucks coming this way, get back here fast. The plane takes off, and while it is away, B.A. finds a case of grenades, which they load onto the van together with a case of rifles. It's not long before Murdoch brings the plane back. There's some sort of encampment out there in the desert. Not U.S. Army, but very professional. Stockaded and well camouflaged. Could be some terrorist organization. Okay, back to the hotel. Let's get ready to pay them a visit. Back at the hotel, they borrow the hotel bus and strengthen it with steel plates intended for a new water storage tank, and are still working at it when B.A. has to leave them to visit with Jenny Wayman in her room. When the music stops, turn your cassette over. B.A.'s knock meets with no reply. He tries again, but the result is the same. He thinks he hears a faint cry, as if someone is being prevented from calling out. He hesitates no longer, but puts his great bulk against the door and bursts through it. An evil-looking man with a drooping mustache confronts him. Before B.A. has a chance to do anything, he is grabbed by four men who are waiting at the side of the door. So nice of you to drop in, Mr. A. Team Baracus. What a pity we are just going out, and so are you, right out. My own personal little spider is about to bite you. An extra strong dose for you, I think. <laughs> B.A. can do nothing as the man produces a hypodermic syringe and injects him in the forearm. <clears throat> Enjoy your dreams, big man, for you will never wake up. B.A. slumps to the floor, unconscious. <sighs> Leave him there. He is no use to us. Bring the girl quickly. It is she we want. As time passes and B.A. does not return, Hannibal gets worried. Better see what he's up to, fellas. They find B.A. lying on the floor of Jenny's room. Hannibal examines him. Oh. He's had a massive dose of some sort of venom. Face finds Jenny's handbag on the floor and looks through it. The girl's right. Her father is a venom expert. My guess is we'll find both of him and the girl with those terrorists in the desert. So, he's the nearest Venom specialist who can save B.A.'s life. We must take a chance. Get B.A. into the van and take him out to that plane. Uh. Out in the desert, Murdoch starts the plane's engines while Hannibal and Face lift B.A. into it. They strap B.A. into one of the passenger seats and Hannibal gives Murdoch his instructions. There's a box of grenades on the co-pilot seat. Circle around until you see us approaching the terrorist stockade, then use them. Happy landings. The plane takes off with B.A. slumped unconscious in his seat. Hannibal and Face speed back to the hotel to pick up their armored bus, which they load with the rifles they found with the plane. They board the bus and set off with as much speed as they can make across the desert towards the terrorist hideout and the doctor who can save B.A. As the armored bus nears its objective, Murdoch swoops the plane down low and drops grenades to create a diversion. After several explosions, Hannibal and Face are surprised.
surprised to see a pickup truck driven furiously out of the encampment pursued by two jeeps carrying armed men who fire repeatedly. Hannibal does not recognize the driver of the truck who seems to be alone. The jeeps are gaining and it seems that it will not be long before the fugitive is captured. Hannibal and Face are too far away to be of help. Then they see a figure kneel up in back of the pickup. It's Jenny Wayman. The driver must be her father. What does she think she's doing? She's an easy target. She'll get shot. But Jenny knows very well what she is doing as she lobs a grenade at the leading jeep, forcing it to take avoiding action and so lose ground on its quarry. Jenny is not content at that. She continues to lob out grenades until one of them lands just in front of the jeep and explodes, sending the vehicle high into the air to land on its back, a total wreck. The second jeep circles round and gives up the chase, intending to return to base, but it reckons without the Air Force. Murdoch puts the plane into a dive and scores a direct hit to the jeep. The truck drives towards the bus and both vehicles stop. The truck driver is indeed Dr. Wayman and Jenny introduces him to Hannibal and Face. The doctor explains what has happened to him. Those guys are terrorists, all right, and they want to use the hotel as cover for a permanent base to mount sabotage attacks on the U.S. They tried to keep people away from it and get the owner to sell by injecting guests with spider venom. When they found that I was there and an expert, they kidnapped me and tried to make me help them. They wanted me to produce a stronger and more deadly venom, and when I refused, they kidnapped my daughter and threatened to harm her if I didn't cooperate. Jenny takes up the story. My father was just about to give in, although I tried to stop him, when your plane came over and started dropping grenades. Well, the diversion gave us a chance to grab the truck and try to escape. It was a stroke of luck that there were some grenades in the back. And lucky that you knew how to use them. <laughs> Hannibal is impatient to get going. Now, do you two feel like helping some more? Oh. Just get in the bus, grab a rifle, and give us a hand with the wiping up so the doc can see the B.A. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hannibal drives the bus, with Face sitting beside him, pointing a rifle through the slit in the steel plate which replaces the windscreen. Dr. Wayman and his daughter point rifles through the side slits. Let's go! Hannibal presses hard on the accelerator, and the bus gathers speed slowly with all the extra weight of steel that it is carrying. At last, however, the vehicle travels fast enough and Hannibal steers it directly at the entrance to the terrorist's arcade. At the same time, Murdoch zooms the plane in for another attack. With a crash, the bus bursts through the barrier. The firing from the bus and the grenades from the plane are too much for the terrorists and they are forced to surrender. The plane comes into land and Murdoch sits at the controls and smiles. Hannibal steps over with an unlit cigar in his hand. Great flying, Murdoch. But don't just sit there. We've got to get B.A. to the doctor. Murdoch laughs aloud as the plane door opens and B.A. steps shakily out. It'd take more than a black widow to take out B.A. The terrorists are locked up and left with Dr. Wayman and Jenny, who agree to call the police when the A-team are well clear and it's not long before the famous quartet are once more seated in their familiar van, making good time back to Helen.